Welcome to this new astrology podcast. In this podcast, I want to talk about the sign of cancer rising in the natal chart. As is usually my style, I will start by giving a brief description of what the sign of cancer represents. Now you have Aries all the way to Taurus and then Gemini and Cancer. So Cancer is the fourth sign evolving from Aries. So what is born in Aries, as I've mentioned earlier, Aries is the natural, the zero degrees of Aries is the natural ascendant. And so what is born at the zero degrees of Aries is the birth of self-awareness. Now, so self-awareness becomes that thing that is evolving, transforming, and each milestone of transformation is what a sign is. Each milestone is an archetype. A personality archetype that is really one thing that is evolving by the time the evolution gets to the sign of cancer then the concerns have to do with what the internalization of reality as feeling I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk about what comes after or what comes before what how this internalization of feeling actually became the internalization of feeling Uh, for that I, I have you know, I reserve that d- level of detail for my classes where I teach uh, natal chart synthesis. So cancer is that sign, that internalization of feeling. And so it's an inward process. That's what the sign of cancer is. It's an inward representation of what reality looks like. And that inward representation, that internalization, really is, the idea is to get a one-to-one match between what reality is and what the internal representation of reality is, so that the individual is able to better function in reality, because they know what reality is. So the sign of cancer really is a knowing process, fundamentally, but it is not the knowing process that engages the intellect, it is the knowing process that comes about as feeling. Why? Because it's the first stage of that knowing process. It is primal. So it is the kind of knowing that does not resolve in itself into any type of logic or any type of uh, uh, rationality. It's a, a knowing process that is ex- that is felt extremely personally. Okay. That is what it means to internalize a reality. And so. The symbolism for the sign of cancer is the gut, your stomach. Because when you put things into your mouth, the final or the temporary resting place is the digestive system. So the sign of cancer, that internalization process really represents the digestive system in a sense, if you think about it. Okay. And the stomach for one, especially because that forms a temporary sac that uh, everything you put into your mouth um, goes into, you know, breathing into your lungs also is an internalization process. Okay, so we can see that this internalization process, what is it used for really? Now, like I said, if you can internalize an accurate representation of reality, then you have a what looks like a one-to-one match between what reality is supposed to be and your internal representation of it, and that allows you to better function. But what that really means, symbolically, is that that is the nature of acceptance. Because when you when something is accepted, there is an internalization of that thing that is married or coupled to something else. Okay? And so, the sense of acceptance really is key when it comes to the sign of cancer. On my uh, website, where you can trial view uh, snippets of my training videos, my training videos on natal chart synthesis, uh, there is a, a five minute preview of my uh, training video on the astrological signs that basically focuses on the sign of cancer. And, you know, I decided to release that as a preview because it's the sign of cancer is one of the most important signs in the natal. I mean, every sign is important, but the internalization process is very essential. And, uh, it's essential to what comes after because what comes after cannot be successful if the internalization process is not uh, well done. And so all 
cancer placements carry this need for internalization. Now, the internalization is a function and that function has a measurement attached to it. Now, if this function is carried out correctly, then the sense of acceptance that develops from this function now helps the individual to be able to accept reality and themselves. Now, obviously, uh, because of this internalization process, the sign of cancer forms the deepest part of representation within the human psyche, astrologically speaking. So the idea of the sign of cancer is that this representation must reach deep enough within the psyche to be able to internalize the reality. And the internalization process must be so complete as to generate a sense of self-acceptance or acceptance in general. But the young developing mind doesn't know what acceptance is. It feels it as a need. Now, if this need is to be met, then there needs to be a literal uh, metamorphosis or a literal manifestation of what this acceptance should be. And this happens in various guises, but the primary form within which it happens is the acceptance that comes from a parent, especially mother, because mother represents the first level of accept, the first awareness of acceptance that a young developing mind uh, encounters. Because prior to that, the mind does not know what acceptance is. It experiences acceptance as a need for acceptance, and that need is what we tell him what we term as emotional safety or emotional security. So it's a need to feel safe. This need is what envelopes the archetype of the sign of cancer. It's something that you simply cannot separate from the archetype. It is a need to feel safe. And people experience safety in different reasons. But the first expression of safety is the cuddle and the nurturing embrace of mother as she suckles her young. Now, in the absence of that, the mind cannot develop without uh, plugging that need with something else. So children who have had uh, an improper acceptance from mother, they need to fill that void with something else. And they always do. Everybody does, because you can't have a gap. And so people feel that need with various other types of schemes. For often children and children who didn't have, who didn't experience that, there is a problem. But the mind compensates for that by feeling that need with something else. And this translates into, uh, into things, different things later in life. Okay. Emotional security might then come in the form of financial security. It might come in the form of, uh, partnership security. Whatever it is, it creates a need. And when the placement of the moon now contacts any other planet in aspect, then that need is either accentuated or it is suppressed. Now, when cancer rises as a sign, you know, on the ascendant, the projection of that sign is the opposite direction, which is Capricorn. And so solar placements in cancer and Cancer risings do not have the same type of needs in that sense. Now, in the rising sign, the need is projected to the descendant, which finds it very difficult to implement that need because there's Capricorn rising on the descendant. And where you have Capricorn is where things take time to develop. So the sense of need is, would I say, restricted. It is rationalized down to the point where the individual begins to tell themselves all the time that there is no need. They can be self-sufficient. Now, that is not possible because of the sign that's rising on the ascendant. It's not possible. So what you have is the that need is experienced as a blockage. And because the descendant is where we meet the what we consider to be external reality, especially in the form of other people, then this represent a blockage in being able to connect that need to strangers, a strange person that you never met. And 
to see the importance of this is when you look at the fourth house cusp where you would naturally have the sign of cancer what you have there is libra which is the sign you would naturally have on the um the descendant now there are variations to this because some signs sometimes based dependent on the latitude where you are born the uh these signs may not actually sit on the angles they may so you may have some signs intercepted and all that but notwithstanding uh, for the average uh, cancer rising that has, you know, was born closer to the equator, you would have this liberal on the cusp of the fourth house, which brings that need into the area of partnerships. And not partnerships per se, but into the area of balance, the need to harmonize. But that is blocked on the ascendant, depending on when, where the, the placement of Saturn is in a natal chart which will now act as a tuning mechanism for the Capricorn that sits on the cusp of the Descendant. The idea is that most, cap most Cancer Risings have to endure this lack of connection that is able to feed that need that they have. They have to endure it like a blockage for considerable lengths of time until they now grow into maturity because what the descendant is now asking is a rationalization, a type of growing up process, you see, whereby it's no longer the type of uh, emotional security or safety that mother provides, but the emotional security and safety that a stranger is capable of providing. That is the difference. Okay? Whereby if your son was in cancer or your moon was in cancer, then that's not... The, the need becomes different. The need now becomes the way to arrange your reality because that's what the sun impl implies. The way that you structure your reality needs to be in accordance with the satisfaction of emotional well-being. When the moon is in the sign of cancer, that's a, a totally different meaning because now the moon is our home. And so those needs are now felt as an instinct so that unconsciously the person will demand that need. And in the demand of this need, since cancer is an inward-facing sign, the demand of this need being instinctual with the moon in cancer is extremely powerful. So the moon in cancer represents one of the most powerful placements that you can have in the sign of cancer because it now takes that need into the instinctual unconscious realm. And it can be extremely powerful because if this need is not met, the person will constantly upturn their life or their reality right searching for the fulfillment of that need and what does this need look like it's an internalization process like i've said but it is a need to connect on a very sensitive soul level it's the need to connect the deepest parts of being that is a very vulnerable part because it is a merger of what you term home within the individual so home, what characterizes home? Home is usually a place of stability. If you have your two parents raising you as a child in a stable home where meals are prepared three times a day at the right time, everything has a rhythm. Just like the moon. The moon is changeable, but it's, it is predictably changeable. And that makes the difference. So that there is nothing surprising about the behavior of the moon. And that's exactly what is needed. It's not that things don't change in, in cancer. After all, cancer sits on the cusp of a, a cardinal house. So there is change to be expected there. But it's a predictable change. And it is the predictability of that change that leads to what? The intense sense of familiarity that eventually characterizes the sign of cancer. It's always familiar, it feels like home. Or it's always familiar and it feels like mother. And so that's where the connotation of the sign of cancer with home, with mother comes from. And also the sense of having roots. Because the sense of having roots, it's not roots per se. It's being able to know where you come from. And that's important because if you're going to internalize something, the process of internalizing means that you're going to have very long memories and very vivid memories about everything that happens. Because that is the nature of internalization. And when you create such memories, there is an additional flavor coupled to it because everything, every memory that you have now becomes colored by that emotional stamp that is attached to everything.
So the way that a Cancerian memorizes things is not the same way that Gemini memorizes things. The memories are deeper because the best way to remember something is to add emotional flavor to it. So don't joke with the memory of, of someone who has uh, significant placements in cancer, especially as a rising sign. Now, as a rising sign, all the memories are attached to the need for relationships. So slights in relationships, even they hurt more because they are felt more and the memories last longer. Okay. Now, it is easier to build a familiarity based on home and mother. It is not so easy to achieve the same feat when you're dealing with a stranger. And so the thing that can most cancer risings find enigmatic is that they need to find something that looks like the familiarity of with mother. They need to find it in a total stranger. And that's extremely difficult. That's the difficulty in every cancer rising sign. Okay? And depending on the placement of Saturn, you know, you will be able to calibrate and to tell how much difficulty is going to be experienced in this because the placement of Saturn in the natal chart with uh, Cancer rising and with Capricorn on the descendant will now tell you the degree of intensity, you know, that this uh, tuning process is going to take. You see, you can imagine that each, ha each house starting from the 1st to the 12th represents a, a preset amount of time. So the earlier the sign of... Uh, the earlier the placement of Saturn is, then the sooner you can realize what you need to realize in order to be able to break that jinx of being in uh, self-sustaining relationships. The the later the sign of uh, the later the placement of Saturn is, then you know, the more time it takes. Because Cancerians form wonderful partners. You know, it's it, as far as I am concerned personally they form the best partners to have. There is only one drawback. You see, every Cancerian, every significant placement in Kansas suffers from one uh, major, uh, I would say, uncomfortable truth. They need something to love. Because, you know, the process of internalization is a very emotional process. It leaves the person feeling all sorts of things. Okay? Especially if the moon is making uh, aspects to Neptune. They feel all sorts of things. So everything is sensitive. Everything leaves an emotional track within them. And it, when the sign is rising, then the facing, you know, the facing nature of the person does not allow them to be that vulnerable in the world. So what they do is they hide everything. Everything. Now, the process of hiding everything means that you will not be able to tell that every single statement, every single action leaves an emotional trail within the cancer rising personality. That's how sensitive they are. Like an antenna. No, not like an antenna. Like a bubble chamber. You know, a particle, uh, a bubble chamber in a particle accelerator. You know, if you go to CERN in, in, in Geneva, you have the Large Hadron Collider. But the collider doesn't really mean anything. It's the de detector, the particle detector. That's where all the science is done. It's a huge bubble chamber. The idea is that every particle that has a track will leave Every particle that is engaged in the, the collision or that comes out of the collision of the accelerated beams will leave a trace in this bubble chamber. And that's the way you know that the particle has been created. That bubble chamber is under intense, immense pressure. That's what the Cancerian feels like. So that every single action, every trace, every leaves a track within them. And the worst part of it is that that track is a memory. So for these kind of people, the past and the, f and, and the present is all merged into one. They can feel what you said two years ago. They can feel it as if you said it just right now. So when they are hurt, that hurt is always present. And that is what accounts for the fluidity of the moods. Because you never know what can set off that memory. It could be something that just looked like that memory. And then it brings back everything.
So the can- telling the cancerian to be div- divorced from the past is like telling them not to exist. What does that even mean? How would they even do that? It's impossible. And they are built that way for a reason. That is the internalization process. You know, the reason why the mind developed the ability to have things familiar is because you don't have to go through the process of figuring everything out all over again. It's an instinctual memory that you now have, what some people call muscle memory. So the cancerian is able to react with lightning speed because they don't have to figure anything out. Once it looks like the pattern, then it must be the pattern. Now, the drawback with this is that uh, sometimes they get to react to things that are not there. Sometimes a blink is just a blink. It's not a wink. Sometimes there's no meaning attached to the things people do. But the cancerian doesn't see that like that. So oftentimes when the cancerian is stressed, then around them it may feel like you're walking on eggshells. Especially when there's a rising when it's a rising sign. And the internalization process means that you will not know that this is what is going on. They just become moody. They may clam up. And they may, uh, you know, one of the sure ways is the passive aggressive, you know, they just shut down. And it could be for anything. It could be for nothing. Okay. So that what is demanded is what the cancerian feels. A psyche that is like them. I mean, apart from the fact that that psyche must also be able to reach out. Because if you have two cancerians like that, they're just going to drift apart until one person just accidentally initiates conversation all over again then it's like nothing ever happened but they can't reach out the nature of the internalization process means that the cancerian is always waiting for things to happen they're always waiting for love even though they desperately need love it is it has been noted that a cancerian significant placements in cancer including the rising sign they need something to love if they do not have anything to love then a toxicity builds up within them. A toxicity that poisons their mind. So they must have something. It could be a child, it could be a dog, it could be a pet. Any type of pet. It could be God. But they must be devoted to the nurturing of something. That's the only way for them to stay healthy. An extremely toxic situation is that it can someone with significant placements in cancer, especially the rising sign, because the rising sign can suffer in silence for long periods of time. And this is an, an excruciating agony, but you won't see it. Okay? They would cry inside, but you won't see it because of the sign that's sitting on the descendant. But it also means that if this same cancer rising has maybe significantly like some placement in, in Venus, like Venus in Aries, for instance, then that means that there is a, a way to relieve the pressure because Venus in Aries will simply go after what they want. If they love something or they like something, they just go after it. Now, they would have the clamping process as in the inability process, but at some point in time, Aries says, throws all caution to the wind and goes after it. You know, it doesn't matter how it turns out. Okay? The, can- the cancer rising will deal with the repercussions of that internally. You know, but not everybody with cancer rising will have Venus in Aries. You could also have Venus in Cancer with cancer rising and the sun in the sign of cancer in the 12th house. This is incredible. Okay? Because then you're look. The person is... The internalization process is so deep and so complete... They are the sweetest, most gentle people. But they can also be set off by anything. Everything. It's one mood roll to the next mood roll. And you have to be deeply intuitive and in sync with their emotions to be able to understand how they're feeling from day to day. And to do that, you really need to be able to love them. Not just as a word. To love is to know. You need to be able to get to know them. So that you can synchronize with that engine of theirs that is... Literally, you know, it can be here, there, and everywhere. But that is what they expect from a partner that loves them. Now, I've talked about how the sign of cancer must wait. They are passive. They're not aggressive. They're passive. They're not active. So they must wait for the things that they want. And they rely on the good fortune of the things that they want coming their way. And if it doesn't happen... You know, if it begins to take too long, they begin to sulk. 
okay? Because they are suffering in silence. Now, the thing about cancer is that cancer is, you know, it's the sweetest sign as far as I'm concerned. They're the sweetest, most sensitive souls and personalities. They are worthy to be loved. And if you have never loved someone with cancer, then you haven't truly understood what it is like to recall the memories of being nurtured as a child. Okay? Because that is the most accepting type of love. So I recommend it if you've never loved a cancerian. Try it. You know, some people don't have the patience for it, but you know, love requires patience. Now, one of the significant drawbacks of this placement, of this archetype, is apart from waiting for things to happen, is that they cannot resist the offer of love. They spend all their times waiting for it. It's always on their mind. Never a second goes away without, you know, this being on their mind. So whenever it's offered, however it's offered, they are deeply attracted to that. So it is very important that a Cancerian has roots. And I'm talking about, especially cancer rising, it is very important that they have partnership commitment roots. Because if they don't, right, it is very easy for them to receive love, however it's offered, even though it's uh, superficial or even though it's, once it's offered, they're so tempted to, to, to accept it seem not to be able to say no but you will never know this because of capricorn sitting on the cusp of the descendant when cancer is a rising sign they simply have this veneer of you know of the capricornian stonewall face but underneath that there is a there is a being of so much tenderness waiting for love and when love is offered it is accepted naturally now there needs to be something else within a natal chart that basically breaks that to say look i'm on a committed relationship and i love my partner blah 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 okay that's the the roots i'm talking about but if this doesn't happen there's a very strong potential for those with significant cancer placements to you know basically rack up a lot of relationships because they're searching for something that they cannot even define it often feels, you know, in su that such these feelings that they have are so primal in the sense that they're not primal like in the sense of Scorpio that are very deeply sexual, looking to connect and, you know, reach deep beyond the orgasm into a source. No, the Cancerian is looking for extreme familiarity. These are emotions that were created in the nurturing stages of life when they were children. Those emotions are so powerful, they form the container within which the mind further develops. And so the Cancerian longs for that connection all over again. But they're no longer babies. Now they need to live in an adult world that is basically, you know, that doesn't have that nurture. And the world oftentimes can appear very cold and cruel. Okay? So, to recap, the Cancerian is the deepest possible internalization of the sense of I. Okay? And the internalization process is so deep and so complete, it's extremely emotional. And most of this emotion is not given to verbalization. It's, you know, the projection of it or the externalization of it is usual in the form of a rolling mood. Okay? Um, the Cancerian needs something to love. Doesn't matter if the cuter it is the better. But they need something that can absorb all that, all those feelings and emotions that are generated within them. They need to be able to nurture something. And to nurture means to grow something. So it doesn't matter even if it's plants or flowers, as long as they're beautiful and they have this sense of being nurtured so that the Cancerian can see something from start to finish. That also makes the Cancerian a very good manager of money. Because part of the security drive is having feet planted on the grounds securely. So they like to have this nest egg that they don't gamble with. Usually the, can the cancer rising would like to marry into a well-to-do uh, relationship. It would like to be in a well-to-do relationship with a partner that has achieved something in the world. And the reason for that is because of the Capricorn that's rising on the descendant. Okay. The need is to be able to res to have a partner that you can respect. So the partner must have achieved in some field. It doesn't matter what it is. But the achievement must be socially acceptable. 
Okay? Because it is important that they are able to respect the partner. And that's what that grounding in a commitment really is all about. Otherwise, the Cancerian with Cancer Rising just drifts one relationship to another. Okay? Now, it is also very important that if you love a Cancerian, someone with Cancer Rising or someone with significant placements in Cancer, you must demonstrate that love. It's not just okay to say that you love them. It's not just, it's not about buying them stuff. No. You must notice the details. You must know when that mood changes. You must be there. You must understand the rhythm. And you don't have to say anything. You don't really have to do anything. A cuddle and a hug. A show of understanding. A shoulder. But more importantly, being there. Now, sometimes when this is not forthcoming, the, the Cancerian comes to the conclusion that nobody really cares and then begins the whole phase, whether it's a man or a woman. They just don't care anymore and they would roll with whatever hand is offered until it drives them so moody and so annoyed at themselves that they disappear for a while and lock themselves up away while they internalize their sadness. And something needs to snap them out of that. Ultimately, they come out, and if cancer is rising, with the exterior face repaired, and then the stone walled again, it's almost like nothing ever happened, and they begin the entire process all over again. But the internal clock is ticking for this cancer rising. You see, they feel it, and it worries them. And when, a ca when someone with significant cancer, cancer placements begins to worry, ooh... It's the one disease that afflicts them terribly. Worry. Okay? Because worry leads to sadness. And sadness leads to moods that become passive-aggressive. And it's difficult to break the cycle. Now, if you are lucky enough in this life to fall in love and to have a, the love returned with a cancer rising or significant placements in cancer, well... You need to know that you have someone who will almost smother you with love. And you need to make sure that you have the temperament for that. Okay? They will demonstrate affection in ways that are nurturing. They will cook for you. They will make the place cozy and warm and loving for you. You know, they expect you to spend time in that environment. Because not spending time, not being able to spend time in that environment simply means that the love is not reciprocated. You see, Cancerian love is something that needs to be demonstrated. And they have their entire language, their entire love language, which they cannot tell you. Because these things cannot be verbalized at that stage. You need to be a part of the process to understand the language. That is what it means to love these people. You must be able to know them. And when you are able to internalize their reality as they have internalized it, then you have a wonderful partner on your arms. Okay? You just need to... Sometimes security needs can become overbearing. They can go... When things have begun to, to be imbalanced because of the liberal that sits on the cusp of the, f of the fourth house, then the Cancerian can play a lot of games. A lot. As a way of defending what they consider to be their sensitive and vulnerable self. They will play games. And those games will involve telling a lot of untruths. It's just, it comes with the territory. So it is important that if you must love this personality, you must really get to know them. That's really what it is. Because, you know, when cancer rises on the cusp, you know, the first house is a traditionally a Martian house. So it's an outgoing house. It's a house that is concerned with assertion, aggression. But the cancer is not aggressive. The aggression then becomes passive aggressive. And so if when things begin to go wrong and maybe you've tuned out of their cycle or their their cycle, their mood cycle has become so um, so random because of that an internal disturbance that haven't been hasn't been dealt with, then what you would have is a series of passive aggressive moments. And sometimes it may lead to actual aggression in terms of emo an emotional outburst when they cannot keep it within any longer. And you'll be like, where did this come from? But it's been there bubbling all through. Okay? So they may throw 
tantrums that feel childish sometimes over things that you may consider to be unimportant. But if you don't, then you haven't tuned into the cancer. You haven't tuned into the personality. Because like I said, everything leaves a streak. And everything leaves an important streak. Now, you have to decide for yourself if this is what you want. Okay? Because it's not intense per se, but it's a water sign. It's an emotional sign. So you're dealing with someone who is very emotional and very sensitive. And you cannot be in a situation where you need to be told everything. They're an instinctual creature. Okay? So by the time they start throwing things around and getting very moody or having outbursts, then, you know, the internal, the, the internal uh, reservoir is filled up. Okay? And did I also mention that they're very fertile? Usually the two periods coincide. <laughs> when, you know, because it's Mars and the Moon. This is, an ex uh, uh, you know, a very fertile period. So if you have cancer, the sign of cancer rising as your ascendant and you, and you want to get uh, an insight that is synthesized, because there's a difference, you know. People cannot be understood without synthesis. The, the, the construct of what it means to be a human personality is too complex to make itself amenable to any other thing apart from synthesis. Now, synthesis is the process by which everything in the natal chart is considered at once, with only a single perspective produced. So it is not reducible to the sum of the parts. Yes, you have the ascendant that has a significant impact because it's like looking through, uh, it's like looking through a pair of uh, uh, glasses or something. You know, if you wear shades, then everything is going to look shady in terms of darker or you know. If you look through a, gr a red filter, then everything takes on a red hue. You look through a green filter, then everything takes on a green hue. The ascendant is like a filter. And when, you're, when the, an individual is born into, a, uh, into the world as a, a cancer rising, then everything takes on the hue of that internalization process. It doesn't matter what the sun really is doing or what the moon really is doing. Everything will be seen from the perspective of that internalization process. The emotions, the emotional uh, uh, nature now becomes like a, a, a registry where everything is recorded. And the only reason for that is so that it can be revisited over and over and over again. The key is that cancer must develop extreme familiarity. Now... It could be extreme familiarity in something constructive for society. And then the person begins to approach competence levels that approach genius. Because they've revisited the same thing over and over again. They've become very good at it. Or it could be finding faults and being picky and being, you know. It's still the same process. It's just channeled in a different direction. And much depends on the overall nature of the chart. So there's a lot of competence involved in the Cancerian. There's a lot of competence involved in being Cancerian because the aptitude is the development of extreme familiarity. So if Cancer is rising as your ascendant and you want a perspective, then reach out to me. You can bet that you will get to understand your natal chart in a way that you have never understood it before. And the, the key is the, the, the power of synthesis. Because when things combine in the natal chart, they change quality. And the change in quality is not a sum of these individual parts. It's totally different. Okay? The placements in the natal chart, when they, are, when they interact, and they interact non-commutatively, meaning that the order of interaction is as important as, the, as the, the things that are interacting. So when the moon appears before something, it's not the same as when that thing appears before the moon in interpretation. That's why everyone is different. Okay? So if you have cancer rising in your natal chart and you want uh, a perspective that is based on synthesis, you can be rest assured that it's a perspective that is uh, very hard to come by because synthesis is not common. It's very difficult. It takes a long time. But it's the quality that matters, isn't it? <laughs>